Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie. This is the week 13, March the 22nd through the 28th, a weekly wrap up. Okay, so that was such a quick intro. Like, I don't think I've ever done an intro that quickly. Just random thoughts. Um, so, <laughs> You guys are loving the lifestyle portion, so I will get to that shortly. Um, but make sure that you are checking the description box um, for so much pertinent information. I like to chuck all that information in there if I talk about books or anything like that. Um, they're normally time stamped. Also, the time stamp for if you aren't interested in my lifestyle portion of my videos, uh, weekly videos these days, uh, you can time jump to the actual reviews. Um, make sure that you're liking and subscribing the videos because I've come to find that even when I drop down and only do two videos a week, it's sort of weird because I'll drop my video at like noon and even in these current times of not supposed to be touching your face, which I just did like a whole bunch, but I just got out of the shower and I haven't been outside, so I haven't been exposed to any germs. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. You, I mean, it's weird that I can't still, I still can't seem to get any views. It's just, it's maddening sometimes when I think about it. I dropped a video on Wednesday and at noon and I didn't get any, I got fewer views in the first 24 hours than I have in the last like 10 videos that I have um that I have dropped it's it's just so strange I don't know if it's the algorithm if it's that you guys are so burnt out of being self-quarantined self-isolated and you know doing social distancing that you're not watching YouTube or if you are watching YouTube you're just not watching my videos I don't know I don't know that's the dilemma that I'm going through right now when it comes to YouTube is am I still relevant am I still talking about things that you guys want to hear about I don't know I don't know um now for my job life so I have had to do social distancing and I guess you could say self-isolation on the weekends because my job has decided that they're essential and my state has allowed them to do such uh, because it's a sign company and we make signs. So we are sort of listed as essential personnel. Whew. Huge, huge thing for me because I have been an essential personnel before. I've had to be on 24-hour call. I mean, I was in the military and, you know, you're always essential there <laughs> um, for one way or another. And then the fact that I was a military police officer, it, that just made it even worse. So um, I give major props and, you know, things like that to first responders of all nature. And I really appreciate them. I do don't feel that I should be uh, lumped into that because all I do is paperwork and deal with signs. Now, on the flip side of that, um, mama needs to pay her bills. So the company that I'm with isn't set up so that they can give their employees, you know, paid time off and shut down or anything like that. They're practically freaking Robin Peter to pay Paul. So um, it's just crazy. So in the office, we're doing social 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 distancing and thank god for that because gosh i don't think i could stay in the small little office whew, with uh my dirty ass director any longer so not last week the week before last i came down with like a cold an actual cold um because i know the symptoms and um and another person in the office had a cold. So we were coughing. Not really. No, I didn't cough. I had some sneezing and um, I was just irritable. Uh, but <laughs> it, I guess, supposedly 
uh, the director that I work for, he ended up getting a cold last week and ended up taking Monday off because he didn't feel well. So he didn't come in. And then Tuesday through Friday, he came in and he coughed and he hacked and he was just, ugh, so gross. The grossest person I have ever met. And <sighs> he legit sneezed into his hand. <laughs> into his hand. Had the HR person say, hey, how about you go wash your hands now? Ignored her. Walked back into the office and started working. I was like, oh, that dirty motherfucker. <sighs> wow. Wow. Thank goodness they are doing as much as they possibly can for social distancing. And I was moved out of that little office uh, that he works in um, to a different area. And, <sighs> ooh, dirty, 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 dirty. And it really annoyed me a little bit because there was another employee that had come in and he wasn't there for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and they ended up sending him home. Now, I was I voiced my opinion and was like, you know, I don't see how that's that's right. You know, I don't know all the backstory because, you know, he could have been possibly exposed, and then you went ahead and sent him home after being here for 10 or 15 minutes. But you guys let this guy that is visibly and continually dirty and nasty cough hack and just be germ infested and spreading all over this place that isn't necessary it's set up in a warehouse so it's not necessarily the cleanest place anyways <sighs> for an entire week and you've had multiple people come and say dude i don't feel comfortable working around him can you send his ass home can you do something and you don't do it? I had some feelings about that. I had some feelings about that. I still have feelings about that. Because I don't care that he is supposed to be the director of the section that I work in. That shit could run without him. It does run without him. Since his ass don't know how to do anything anyways. <sighs> okay. I feel better now that I've gotten that off my chest. Let's get into the books that I read last week. I started the week off by finishing Barbarian's Prize, which is Ice Planet Barbarian's number five by Ruby Dixon. This is a sci-fi alien erotica, and I give it 4.25 stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. There is content warning for rape, PTSD, and this book follows Tiffany. Ah, loved it. And Saluk? Saluk. And... Tiffany was kidnapped because if you're following the Ice Planet Barbarian series, you know that these women were taken from Earth and then their spaceship ended up crashing on this ice planet. And now that they've gotten rid of the captors, they are sort of surviving with the aliens that are on this planet. And they have a qui and Tiffany... She, because she was raped by the evil aliens that abducted her, she had some blockage and she had to, you know, sort of figure out what she needed to do or what she needed to overcome. And that is exactly what this story is sort of about. It's about her sort of finding herself and coming to terms with the things that had happened to her and how to move around it. There's a bunch of suitors and Saluk is the one that ends up being her friend and you see a lot of her. They sort of have like a fake relationship sort of. Um, or no, not fake relationship, sort of like a friends with benefits type thing, because she didn't necessarily find him threatening, but at the same time, her qui was not singing to his qui, but he knew in his heart of hearts that, you know, even though his qui wasn't saying she's the one, he knew that she was the one, so he knew that he had to, like, tread lightly and stuff like that. I really enjoyed this story, um... It is a little hard-hitting because of those content warnings, but the way that Ruby Dixon handled them I thought was really good in an alien sci-fi-like way. Like, seriously. 
The next book that I finished was Locking Her Down by Mink. This is a contemporary novella, I guess you could say. Um, I give it four stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an ebook. It is available on Kindle Unlimited, which I am finding that I am loving Mink's stuff. Um, it, most of it is on Kindle Unlim Unlimited, so go check that out. Um, uh, and this is like a secret crush, um, PJ or Penelope Jean, I think, Penelope Joe, Penelope something or another, but PJ, she is this sort of, I guess, rich girl, you could say, and her dad is possibly mafia or a boss or a bad guy but you have Benton who is the family lawyer and he kind of um pushes her into some situations so she ends up getting taken in by the police when she tries to do um a animal rescue from a lab and he has to sort of come to her rescue and it's about their secret relationship or secret crush going on between the two of them both of them kind of want each other but it's an age gap thing as well so it was fun it was quick and I really really enjoyed it the next book that I finished was Blind Date with a Book Boyfriend by Lucy Eden this is a romantic comedy novella I give it 4.25 stars I give it four steam fans I read this as an ebook I have been trying to read this for a while um and I finally just sat down and was like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna read it and I loved it really really enjoyed it it is quick it's fun it's about Jordan and Mike Jordan is in LA to uh, go for a job interview and Mike happens to be at the bookstore that Jordan is visiting there are so many name drops in this but they are so well placed and talked about as romances and I just really enjoyed it it was so much fun and I loved the banter between Jordan and Mike and uh, everything like that so yay romance book love gotta love it got to love it it was so good the next book that I finished was Make You Mine which is Love and Everton number four by Fabiola Francisco I place this in contemporary I give it 4.5 stars I give it three steam fans I read this as an arc you guys will be able to read it um, here coming up shortly either this week or next week uh, but this follows Everly and Eli Everly is this control freak she is trying to live her best life by opening up a and b in Everton and Eli is the contractor that she has working on the property to get her up and running and everything like that. They sort of have history. Um, they know of each other because they're in a small town and Everton is a small town so yeah you get that small town feel you get the tension between the two of them wanting to be together but not really wanting to be together on why they shouldn't be together and their banter back and forth is so much so much fun just so much fun and you just gotta you know let love happen and that is what this story is all about and i really 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 enjoyed it the next book that I finished was Slake His Thirst by Seta J. This is a fantasy paranormal novella, I think. Um, I give it three stars. I give it three Steam fans. I listen to it from the podcast of Read Me Romance. Read, read me romance. And this book follows Lucas, Lucius, Lucius and Sage. Lucius is a vampire security guy on this exclusive like location or casino or I don't know if they're in a different planet are they in a different planet I think so because they talk about teleportation I think um but Sage is a woman that uh she has she's a former body she doesn't really have a career she's a former bounty hunter and she has ties to the magic or whatever they're called in this book I can't really remember um I'm only giving it three stars because I thought it was a great setup book which is exactly what it is uh to the guardians of the realm series but that series has been out for like a while I think there's like nine books in it and then this book 
was written. It's very um, description heavy. Description heavy, I guess you could say. So I found myself intrigued by it, but at the same time, I wasn't feeling the characters. I didn't feel their connection, really. Um, and I wasn't really all that intrigued by the sexy time. Like, at all. Whatsoever. Because I don't know if there was another sexy time before the ending one, but the ending one just was really off-putting because he was like, oh, I'm so big and I can only take you in your butthole. That's the only way I can take you. Mm. Okay. And it wasn't really that sexy. And the final book that I read last week was Truth, which is Consequences Number 2 by Alethea Romig. I placed this in Romantic Suspense Mystery. And this, five stars, again, gave it three Steam fans because I wasn't doing Steam fans back in 2012-13 when I first read this. I'm hinting at this. It is a reread for me. I'm listening to the series in audiobook format and <gasps> I forgot how much stuff happens in this book and in this series and yes, yes, I thought it was later on that I started to love Anthony Rawlings, but it was this book. It was this book that I started to really see his other sides and understand him to figure out um, that I could see through Claire's character why there was love between the two of them. And yes, so many yeses. So many more twists and turns and things are revealed. There are a lot of characters in this. Um, that is the one thing that I kind of do wish uh, did happen for the uh, series. I'm finding that I really wish that the whole series had been a full cast. Uh, but I know in 2012, 2013, or 2018, or whatever, even now, full, cla full cast Nar audio narration is expensive so I understand why there's only one narrator but it would have made I think the experience so much more if it had been a full cast but it's okay um I did enjoy the fact that the narrator is the same from the first book and she had perfected a little more with differentiating which character was which with her inflection of her voice and some of the little accents that she ends up using and I really enjoy that. I can't wait to get to the third book which is Convicted. Yes. Eee! See they're back there. Right there. That is the series. Mm, love it oh so much. Alrighty, what am I currently reading? Well, I'm currently reading, or I will be reading, Convicted, and I have a whole bunch of other books on my slate. Be on the lookout for an announcement video tomorrow morning from me and some romance buddies. We are doing a romance takeover next weekend, so be on the lookout for our announcement videos. My announcement video comes out tomorrow, as well as many of the other ones. Um, we're probably going to give you guys some recommendations and everything like that. I figured I would also do sort of an unboxing or um, something that I got in the mail right here. Um, I've had it for a couple weeks now, and I just hadn't done an unboxing or anything like that, but... Read Me Romance did their spring line, and I had to jump on that because I love them oh so much. So we have their, I got the long sleeve shirt, which is right there. It's their new theme, their new colors. And I also got, bam, the sweatshirt because it gets cold at work and sweatshirts are needed. So to advertise at work, I got my awesome sweatshirt. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I can't wait to wear them. Okay. Well, I think that is all. So 
As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. There's also a recommendation form down in the description box now. All you need is the book title, book, author's name, and which genre you would place that book in. Also, if you could leave your name or how you would like to be addressed if I read a book off of that list uh, for either a project or anything like that, I would like to shout out the recommender. So, um, let's discuss some things down in the comment section, you guys, because those have been slacking too. I think that might be a YouTube thing, but hopefully you guys are all staying safe. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face, which I'm horrible at, um, but stay safe and we will see you guys in the next video.